Welcome back to Remade in California, where we talk about everything from economy to the education. This episode is all about the generational effect in business. Our next guest knows this challenge all too well. Joining us now is Dr. Lynn Anderson, a nature, naturopath and longtime yoga instructor. So Lynn, yoga has become entirely mainstream. Absolutely. I mean, it's like a commodity almost. Well, it's very commercial. Okay. Let's put it that way, commercial, right. uh, which is not what it was like when I first started, which was, uh, oh, I've been teaching oh, wow. for 25 years and practicing for about 30. So, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of changes. And, I, and I'm a yoga fan as well, so, so same, same right. vintage. And, and so as you've seen it go mainstream, just in terms of the kind of the theme of what we're talking about, how do you... Knowing that there's all these young people coming in to do it, what's the cha what are some of the challenges there? Well, you know, um, everybody comes to yoga for the same reason. Right. Our approaches might be different, but everybody comes to look for, they want to improve their physical self, they want to quiet their mind, and everybody's looking for peace and serenity. So for me, how I approach it, I really don't look at the age. Okay. I look at the students, and I look at what I'm trying to teach everybody. And so that everybody, uh, like for example, everybody wants to uh, balance. Balance is important to everybody. So if I start out with a lesson for balance, that affects everyone, no matter what age. Everybody wants that. And then we incorporate that into the okay. practice. So that allows me to work with everybody. Yeah. Is there a challenge just in terms of what people can pick up on? That Younger people tend to be more competitive. And of oh, course, of that's course. not part of yoga. So yeah. we have to kind of work we on that. We talked about that, the, yeah. the competitive spirit versus the more spiritual, the spiritual yeah. part of it. Right. So, um, but w the challenge really is, um, for example, I teach. I have a class on Saturday that has 50 people, and they go from 22 to 82. Oh my gosh! That's the age group. Wow. Now, that's a real challenge when you have 50 people in a room. Yeah. So what I do is I start out with maybe a little a pose that um, is moderate. Mm -hmm. Then I'll build it. Then I'll show a modification so that everybody gets okay. to do everything. And through my class, I will repeat things over and over so that if you do half of my class, half of the poses, right. you're going to get to do everything. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're able to keep it, keep it flexible. Right. Now, as, as you, I know you've worked in many places and you have your own private uh, practice. When you were doing uh, the jobs, were you were you ever discriminated against because of age, or has that ever come up, or gender for that matter? I mean, uh, age, yes. Okay. Um, I would say that ageism is something okay. that I have recently encountered. Um, not so much in yoga as in, um, I'm also a spin instructor and I teach dance. Oh, wow. And I think when you start getting into- You are into a fit human being. <laughs> I am, I am. <laughs> when you start getting into those, there is some ageism there, okay. you know, okay. um, uh, when it has to do with music. However, I have a great reputation for playing really good music, and well, a lot of my people to come to my class. Yeah, yeah. As as to With something like yoga, there's probably many professions. I know healthcare doctor. I like it. I like to think of an older doctor as being somebody that has more experience, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you're worried that oh gosh, he isn't up on the latest techniques. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I mean, I'm sure some of it is just experiential, right? I mean, once they've taken a class, it's like oh, this. Uh, 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 the Absolutely. person isn't going any slower or faster or what right. have you. Well, one of the, you know, the, the real path of yoga is wisdom. Right. You know? Yeah. And wisdom doesn't come without experience. That's right. So I find that many times people come to my class and that's the thing that they take away is the wisdom that I can impart on them because I have been doing this for a long time. Yeah. I may not be, you know, as we get older, our, our brains may not be as quick as mm -hmm. young people. Mm -hmm. However, we can evaluate on a different level and sometimes make better decisions. Well, we were just talking about that with the previous guest. I mean, just being able to have what I always make the the example of we just have a bigger scrapbook that we can refer to. Absolutely. You know, well, when this happened, yeah. th this is what I did. Absolutely, you know? and, yes. And yeah. So what advice do you have for people maybe outside of your area of expertise to, to stay relevant? What do you 
well, what's your secret other yeah. than staying in, being in a smartly being in a industry that keeps you fit? Well, I would say a couple of things. First off, you have to continue to educate yourself. Uh, I'm a huge proponent of continuing education. Education is key to being able to stay relevant in your field and on top of your game. And second, there's, you know, right now what's happening in our society, there's a blending between the physical and the digital, and that blending mm -hmm. is becoming more and more prevalent. Mm. So it, you know, it's very important to understand the physical aspect, but we also have to stay in touch digitally. Yeah. You know, and know how to blend the two together. And I like you might like that you mentioned continuing education because you know, part of our uh, uh, enthusiasm here is for the California Community College system. Right. Right. And and do they do you know of I know they have yoga classes. Do they have classes that would help you train you know become a yoga, anatomy that kind of thing? Absolutely. You could take an anatomy course. Um, okay take a, a digital course, a computer course. Oh, I mean, we point. all have to stay in touch with, you know, social media. All of that stuff is very do relevant. Do you market yourself through I do. that? I do. I, I have my own, a whole social media set with my how does Facebook. That, how does that, how, how did you segue into that? Was that difficult? Um, it was at first, um, and I hired a young person yeah, right. <laughs> to come yeah. in. The reverse and, yeah, ageism. And, yeah. and to teach me. And, Here's um, my phone, 12-year-old, fix exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And um, so, the, you know, I had a young man come in, and he set my social media up. Okay. And at different times, I would hire young people to come in and, you know, teach me how to do this thing called YouTube, because yeah. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then just spending the time working on that, I read um, and and take courses, okay. Any, anything, anytime I can take a course. So I, I'm sure learning digital media and mm -hmm. social media was key to getting your message out. Well, my Facebook page, um, most of my students are, you know, like my Facebook page, okay. and they know that every day there's going to be something up. I put one thing up a day. I don't inundate people because yeah. people don't want too much yeah. of it. Yeah, then you're, but they then can you're follow promoting and, or advertising. And they send me, I get emails and little notes from people of thank you what you said today made a difference well Isn't I know that, awesome? that I'm staying in touch with them yeah. um, and also as an author I mean as an author I started out you know I never learned how to type wow. because when I went to school you didn't if you got know, college bound the, you didn't learn typing no. who's going to so, need to type yeah, anymore? you don't need a typewriter <laughs> and so you know I had a typewriter and I used to type with two fingers right. you know and now yeah. it's amazing what I can do I could put a whole manuscript together right. it's amazing yeah. 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 So, so thinking in terms of creating jobs in community colleges, what what are some of the potential jobs out there for people in fitness? Um, well, we have um, the Nielsen poll just recently put out a, a statistic that in 2017, one out of two people are going to be 50 and older. Right. Now, there's a huge market there. I mean, I'll take your word for it. I'm not <laughs> anyway. But that's a, there's a huge market there. Yeah. And I think that's a field that people should start looking at baby boomers and the mm -hmm. younger generation. And what are the demands of that generation? What's right. that ge generation looking for? They want to stay fit. They want to stay healthy. They want to stay young. Yeah. You know, we all want those things. Right. They, clothing. Uh, there's a, so many different areas we can go in that direction. Yeah. No, I think that's. I think that's a great. Yeah. A great recommendation. Well, thank you for being on. Well, thank with us, you Lynn. very much. I, I enjoyed really it. Appreciate the information. For more information on Dr. Lynn and her book, visit drlynn.com. And for more information on how California's community colleges can help you be remade here in California. Go to caacareercafe.com. Up next, Joni Marks, actress and comedian, surviving the generational effect in business.